Let's get going with part two of DCC++ sensors in JMRIs. Let's go. Hi, I'm Tom Kovicek, and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And I don't like to make really long videos because I know people don't like to sit and watch videos for 20 minutes. So this is part two of DCC++ sensors. So here we go. So we have the four sensors and the two relays on there and you'll see both of the relays are lit up and what we're going to do on here i'm going to show you how the sensors work and how they show up on a serial monitor and i'll have to put this on a split screen and i'll bring the serial monitor up here and you'll see q17 the large clue is active, the small Q is inactive, so I hit it twice. Okay, this one here, that's 15, that's 16, and that one's 18. So we'll just go down the line. Whenever there is a state change, it shows up in the serial monitor. So that's the first lesson of it, how to install it on the DCC++. Now we're going to go over to JMRI. Okay, we're going to open up JMRI with the DCCPP. And it'll take a while. We'll configure base station. You'll see that in the sensors, it has 15, 16, 17, and 18. Turnouts, there's nothing in there. And outputs, it has 41, 42, and 43 invert output. Okay, now let's go over to the tables. We'll pull up a sensor table. And it came up off screen, so we'll bring it up here. And you'll see 15, 16, 17, and 18, and I'll... And one of them is still active on there. Well, let me put them up this way, and they'll be inactive. Okay, so. But you get the idea that you'll see a state change in it as the actual state changes in the sensor. And this one does nothing because there's nothing on those that pin right there right now. So there you go again. And you can control it from JMRI. Now, one thing I did find in here, as soon as you put in the feedback, like I did on the other project I did with the sensors, there's no connection coming back to the actual relay. Over here, 41, we'll put feedback in there. And the reason it's working right now is because it's on BS output. But if I put one sensor on there and I put it on 15, put it here, and I'll come up here and store the information on sensor test. I want to override it. Now, No matter what the sensor is, you can see that DT41 changes from close to throne, but you can't hear. Okay. Oops. For some reason, I got disconnected. And to get the sensors going, we'll just activate all of them. And you can see over on the monitor the DCC++ traffic monitor, you have every time that I activated the sensor, 
and inactivated the sensor, it showed up on there. So this one thro shows thrown. And we have no control over it in the here because you can't hear it clicking, but it shows up. Let me get this out of the way here. Accessory decoder 11. Okay, we'll do this one. That shows up as 11. Output command 42. Output command relay 43. So if I put that on, as a dependency it shows up as a set as a decoder so what we'll do is we'll go back to bs output and there now it shows up the id is high and you can hear it clicking on and off i'm going to show you how to add some sensors on the base station and we'll see 15 16 17 and 18 so what i want to do is go to add and we'll come over here we'll go 19 on that one and we'll come over to this side 19 and we'll save sensors. We'll just do one for right now to show you what happens. So save changes to base station does not write to EEPROM yet. So it's saved to the base station, write sensor and turn out to EEPROM. Yes. Okay, so now it's in the EEPROM. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And I'll do one more. I'll add 20. Okay, so we'll come up here. 20 on that one. 20 on that one and we'll do the same thing we'll save sensors click it once and then click it a second time for the eprom and then when you go over to to close it'll ask you to do it again and write sensors to eprom okay now everything is in the eprom but Let's come down to the sensor table and see if it added it on the sensor table. Now it added the number 19. Let's do these again. So this is an issue that I had before also. Configure base station and see it shows number 20 over here. We'll save it again. Turn us to EEPROM. Close. No changes made. Okay. So the first time it didn't put it in there. So you have to pay attention. Now, 19 is probably getting a signal, getting some kind of erroneous signal from the pin over here on pin number 19 so that's why it's showing up active but it shouldn't show up on anything like that so we'll close out jmri and we'll go into the serial monitor to check to see if it's actually on the eprom close that out we'll bring up the serial monitor And you can see it brought up all the information on there. And it says Q15, 16, 18, and 19. So that's all the further it went on there. So we'll clear the output and we'll put in the commands. And it shows you 15 through 20. 41, 42, and 43 for that. So there you go. From JMRI, it wrote everything back to the EEPROM on your Mega. So that's the two ways of doing it. And we'll have some more information on that later on. And we have to figure out why when you put uh, feedback on something, 
you can't get it working. I have a accessory decoder coming in to test more on this. So I don't know when it's coming. It hasn't been shipped yet. I ordered it a couple of days ago and we'll see what happens with that. I used relays on my output, but you could also use LEDs to light up your layout or you could use LED strips on there. So we'll be continuing our adventures in JMRI in future videos with sensors and with turnouts and with relays. So keep an eye out for them. Until the next time, we'll see you. I need to refuel. Hold on a second. We'll get to it. Might need another bag pretty soon. Okay. I'm ready. I mean, I can get this stuff out of my mouth yet. Okay. Here we go.